Hello, I'm Bill Faulkner and welcome to this presentation. This is video number one in the 2018 versions of the SMRT Safety Video Podcast. Now, this series of videos is produced exclusively for the SMRT. In this first video, we're going to take a look at performing an MRI exam on patient using uh, lower SAR values, and in particular, a lumbar spine exam with an SAR value of 0.4 watts per kilogram. Now, conditions of use like this are usually required when you image patients with particular implants or devices. And in this example, we're going to be following the conditions of use of a Nevro uh, spinal cord stimulation system, specifically the Senza system. We're going to follow the whole body conditions for a 1.5 Tesla system. Now, in the conditions of use for the Nevro spinal cord stimulation system, the Senza system that we're using here, they have conditions of use and the SAR values depend on what area of the body over which you will center or what area you would landmark. We're going to use zone A. And in this particular zone, if the isocenter is positioned in this area as that you see here, then we're going to limit the SAR, whole body average SAR, to 0.4 watts per kilogram. We are going to acquire a four series, well five if you count the localizer, of lumbar spine exam. Additionally, one of the other conditions of use state that on a 1.5T system, the max, maximum active scan time, the total time of all the series, needs to be 30 minutes or less. Now, the images and data in this video are from a white paper that I co-authored for Nevro. And I'd like to thank Nevro for their permission to use this case study for this SMRT video. So the goal here was to acquire a diagnostic quality lumbar spine exam. We wanted to match not only the ACR recommended uh, spatial resolution parameters, but also the contrast parameters. So we needed a sagittal T1 weighted sequence, a sagittal bright fluid sequence. In this case, we're going to do a sagittal T2 star weighted sequence. Then an axial oblique T1 weighted sequence, as well as an axial oblique T2 star sequence. And again, we're adhering to the ACR recommendations for spatial resolution, as well as contrast. The whole body averaged SAR would be 0.4 watts per kilogram or less, and our total tapping time, the time of all the series, needed to be less than 30 minutes. Now this paper, uh, or white paper, the data was performed on a volunteer who was about 5 feet 8 inches and weighed around 180 pounds. They were positioned feet first into the scanner. And this was the system uh, and the software that we used. It was a 1.5 uh, Tesla GE Optima 450W system. It's a 70 centimeter bore. It's using software release DV24. We use the integrated RF body coil for transmission and the 16 channel receive only RF coil. And GE refers to this as their head neck spine coil and we specifically selected the spine portion only that would be labeled CTL456 for the multi-coil configuration. The normal operating mode was selected for the scanner outputs for all of the pulse sequences. This was both for RF and gradient. And the specific sequence and exam constraints, as previously mentioned, was a whole body SAR of 0.4 watts per kilogram and a maximum total cumulative active scanning time, the total time of all the sequences, was 30 minutes. So let's start with the three plane gradient echo localizer. Again, nothing fancy here, nothing to see here, as people would say. Just a three plane gradient echo localizer, right out of the box parameters. Uh, important factor here is, or at least two of the important factors, the SAR, whole body SAR, is extremely low, uh, 0.18 watts per kilogram, and the scan time was just 37 seconds. 
Then for the diagnostic sequences, start with the sagittal T1 weighted sequence. We chose a 2D fast SPGR sequence on a GE. This is just a version of their one of their spoil gradient echo sequences. TR, as you can see, is 500 milliseconds. TE of 4.2. 90 degree flip angle, three signal averages, gave us a scan time of 6 minutes and 28 seconds. We used uh, receiver bandwidths on the order of plus or minus 31 kilohertz, 217 hertz per pixel, if you want to look at it that way. Used a few imaging options pretty much on all of these sequences, the pure for image uh, intensity correction algorithm, anterior sat pulse, and GE's no phase wrap option, anti-aliasing oversampling, what other vendors would call it. For this particular sequence, the whole body SAR was only 0.28 watts per kilogram and a scan time of 6 minutes and 28 seconds. And here's some images from that. Here's 12 images out of the 14 slices that we did. So again, remember we wanted to maintain uh, standard imaging type coverage, our standard uh, spatial resolution parameters, as well as image contrast. And as you can see here, we are able to cover side to side uh, very adequately and good contrast uh, with the uh, articulation processes of set joints here can see the uh, nerve roots well within the fat surrounding them and good contrast between the cord and the CSF as well as the intervertebral disc and the spinal canal or CSF interface. For the bright fluid sequence we chose a 2D gradient echo uh, so it would be a T2 star weighted sequence TR500 to E15 15, 15 degree flip angle three signal averages, so not surprisingly, that gave us the same scan time as the T1, six minutes and 28 seconds, and the whole body average SAR, 0.15 watts per kilogram. Again, we maintained uh, the same uh, slice thickness and gap, 14 slices, and similar spatial resolution, 280 field of view, 288 read, 256 phase. It gave us a pixel area of 1.06 millimeters squared. Here are a sample of these T2 star weighted sequences, again covering side to side quite well, good contrast uh, out in the, the nerve roots and the foramen, and good contrast between the cord and CSF. You can see the nerve roots quite well. You can see the intervertebral disc, the interface between the disc and the CSF is very nicely shown, and you can see Pretty decent contrast within the uh, individual intervertebral disc. For the T1 weighted axial oblique sequence, we went back to the 2D spoiled gradient echo. See the TR of 450, TE of 4.2 milliseconds, 90 degree flip angle. Three signal averages gave us a scan time of 5 minutes and 6 seconds. And the whole body average SAR for this sequence was 0.35 watts per kilogram. And again, uh, very good spatial resolution, 4 millimeter slice thickness, 1 gap, 18 slices. Field of view was 200 millimeters with 256 read, 224 phase. Gave us a pixel area of 0.7 millimeters squared. And here are some sample images. One other thing uh, that we did here, we did three sets of six slices angled through each of the lower three disc spaces. So we're angling with each of the three lower three. And as you can see, we've got good contrast. You can see the nerve roots quite well within the thecal sac. We've got good contrast between the posterior part of the intervertebral disc and the CSF, and again, as well as out into the nerve roots. Uh, facet joints are nicely seen. Ligamentum flavum is nicely seen. So really good quality contrast and quite adequate spatial resolution with low SAR values. For the axial oblique T2 star weighted, went back to 2D gradient echo. For this one, we picked a TR time of 700, 15 millisecond TE, 15 degree flip angle, and three signal averages gave us a scan time of 7 minutes, 55 seconds, probably the longest of the four sequences we did. 
the, uh, this is for coverage reasons, the whole body SAR was 0.17 watts per kilogram. Uh, four millimeters, skip one gap again, but we did 22 slices this time. And this was done as a single block. In other words, we picked a kind of a, a moderate angle and went straight through uh, the lower three vertebral bodies. The field of view was 200 millimeters, 256 read, 224 phase for a pixel area of 0.7 millimeters squared. And again, this was a contiguous slice group, single angle through the lower three disk spaces. Some of the radiologists I've worked with in the past like to do one of the two axial sequences like this because it gives them a better feel for spinal stenosis uh, should the patient have that condition. And as you can see here, We've got good contrast between the posterior uh, intervertebral disc, the CSF. You can see the nerve roots quite well as the ligament, as well as the ligamentum flavum and the facet joints. So here's kind of our summary uh, of what we were trying to accomplish here. Uh, what we did was we did a diagnostic lumbar spine scan with whole body average SAR values of less than 0.4 watts per kilogram in all sequences. And the total scan time of all these sequences was less than 30 minutes. Uh, they add up to some 26 minutes and 34 seconds. So as you can see, it's very possible to do diagnostic quality uh, studies at lower SAR limits. You just can't use the normal protocols that you've been used to using, particularly fast or turbo spin echo sequences. We have to rely on the gradient echo sequences that we used to use a long time ago more for these more rapid uh, sequences. It's time to go back and dust some of those off. They can be very useful for you with some of these implants or devices. So that brings us to the end of this particular video for our uh, video series for Safety Week 2018. Uh, keep an eye out for the next video in this series. Until next time, this is Bill Faulkner. Thanks for watching and take care.